This is Ling 270, Language, Technology, and Society, Module 6, Artificial Intelligence. In this lesson, we'll continue talking about the history of AI, and in particular, focus on the history of early computing. Uh, so we can see uh, that the first uh, major advancements in electronic computing uh, came about during the 1940s. Um, and we also see that the, the first um, researchers aimed at developing artificial intelligence uh, also uh, uh, became prominent in this uh, uh, very soon after, so in this time as well. Uh, so namely in the what's been called the, the Dartmouth workshop was very critical to this early development. We also see some early examples of intelligent system use on base computers, such as uh, Eliza, the first example of a chatbot, which is developed as early at, um, uh, in 1964, so uh, very, very early. We also see the development of Shurdlu, which is the first system which, with a natural language interface. Um, yeah. So uh, the, the first major uh, example of a decimal computer in the United States was called ENIAC. It was developed in 1945, and it, it was in particular uh, funded by the US Army, and it was uh, used a lot for military purposes, especially during World War II. So we can see that uh, there a major uh, um, uh, increase of research was uh, given to computing uh, around World War II, as Alan Turing uh, had, had done as well. Um, we also, uh, uh, so uh, later on in 1949, we see computers which use the binary system as opposed to the decimal system. Uh, uh, Involved. So in other words, using ones and zeros to represent numbers rather than the numbers uh, zero through 10. So this was also a, a machine that was developed by the US Army. Um, and in 1952, we see the first example of a computer developed by uh, and, and owned by an educational institution. And that was actually right here at the University of Illinois. So this was called the ELIAC system. So these were the first examples of uh, electronic uh, computers that were actually um, uh, developed. And there was a very major increase in research following uh, World War uh, II as, um, yeah. And, and we see uh, also at this time in 1956 that there were a lot of researchers who came together to uh, discuss the possibility of a machine uh, or of the development of intelligent systems. So. Uh, this, uh, this Dartmouth workshop uh, became a conference which discussed that every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. So we see that in the early history of artificial intelligence, we see many attempts to formalize and systematize knowledge. Um, and this kind of uh, ideas led to this optimism expressed in the Dartmouth workshop that any, uh, any kind of task or any learning objective uh, can be described in a way that it could be reproduced by a machine. Uh, this is widely considered to be the point where the field of artificial intelligence was founded, and it became a period of optimism. Uh, uh, it, this began a period of optimism about artificial intelligence, uh, which uh, was very prominent in the 1950s and 1960s. So it was during this um, optimism about artificial intelligence when the first example of a chatbot was developed. This was a system called ELISA. ELISA was developed in 1964 at MIT by Joseph Weizenbaum. And it's a, a very rudimentary conversational system. And it was uh, intended to emulate a Rogerian psychotherapist. So the uh, Rogerian psychotherapy uh, it was uh, particularly famous for uh, essentially repeating back, repeating the patient's words back to them as a way that the patient could better understand their own thoughts and emotions. Um, so it was this kind of idea uh, that led to, uh, led Weizenbaum to think of a way to make uh, a computer system uh, appear to have a conversation with a, with a person. Um, and you can actually uh, see many uh, uh, examples of Eliza on, on websites today, and you can try having a conversation with Eliza uh, yourself. Now, uh, Weizenbaum had uh, designed Eliza with the intention to show that, um, uh, that a, a machine might appear to have some conversational abilities, 
but really uh, the system is so rudimentary that we really can't consider this to be intelligent or uh, in any way. Um, now, nonetheless, many individuals who actually interacted with Eliza kind of get, uh, got the impression uh, that they were interacting with something that really understood their emotions. So this was kind of an interesting side effect um, uh, that, it, that it happened. Uh, a lot of human judges might have considered that Eliza was actually, in fact, uh, intelligent in a certain way. Um, no. Now, the way that Eliza actually works is it does a kind of very rudimentary natural language processing. So essentially what Eliza does is it will analyze uh, the, the um, what a, a human says, such as I want to run away uh, from my parents, and then rephrase that, those same structures into a new sentence that is a question that is asked to the user again. Namely, what would getting to run away from your parents mean to you? Um, so Eliza basically has a, a large set of substitution rules of a form like this, um, which uh, can uh, find these common phrase structures and rephrase them into questions that can kind of simulate a, a, um, uh, a conversation. Uh, and it uh, does some kind of basic substitutions. So it, every time the, the word I is said in, uh, in a sentence, it's replaced with you in the question. Um, and, uh, and also to kind of give some uh, appearance of spontaneity, uh, the replacement role that is actually applied is randomly uh, chosen. So that kind of makes the conversation appear to be uh, less repetitive. So we can see that although the, um, some individuals had the impression that Eliza was actually having a conversation with them, in fact, the system was incredibly rudimentary. And I think you could argue that the, um, the system really had no understanding of what uh, the individual was actually saying to Eliza. But nonetheless, it's a, a very interesting uh, example of a early conversational system. And it's something that is, is fun to try out. And I would recommend you do that as well. We also see a, a system developed in the 1970s called Sherdlu. So Sherdlu is a, a program which uh, lives in a world called block world. So this is basically a simple world where there are a bunch of blocks that are kind of arranged in various configurations around each other. Now, what Sherdlu can do is uh, it can interact with a, a human, and the human can either give commands to, to Sherdlu, and Sherdlu can execute them, such as pick up a big red block, and then Sherdlu will uh, respond accordingly. Um, and uh, Sherdlu can also answer questions about uh, the world. For example, uh, can the table uh, pick up blocks? Uh, and Sherdlu can answer accordingly based on the properties of the uh, of the of the world, um, so uh, you can ask Sherdlu, can a pyramid be supported by a block? And Sherdlu can say yes, it's possible to take a pyramid and put it on on a block. So uh, Sherdlu is able to process these natural language questions and and commands and respond accordingly. Now this is a, a very uh, rudimentary system, and and Sherdlu can really only do a very uh, simple amount of language processing. Uh, but nonetheless, this was a, a really key early uh, uh, development in the field of artificial intelligence. So to summarize, um, we see these new developments in electronic computers occur in the 1940s following World War II. And this uh, coincided with the uh, development of the first AI systems and the uh, initial hype about artificial intelligence. We saw how this hype led to the development of the ELISA system, which was a system that could simulate a human conversation, and uh, Shurdlu, a, a kind of a virtual robot which could take commands and answer questions using natural language. Um, so these systems were very, very rudimentary, but they laid the foundation of important advancements in artificial intelligence to come. Um, they were the result of a lot of optimism around artificial intelligence, um, however, this optimism subsided after the 1950s and 60s, but became resurgent recently, as uh, we were probably aware from our experience. And that's what we'll be talking about in the next lesson.